Good afternoon, everyone. It is four o'clock on Monday, or actually it's 401 on <laughs> Monday, October 28th. Um, and this is the second, <coughs> excuse me, uh, SchoolNet webinar uh, for October. And this one is using SchoolNet in the math classroom. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, just for us to kind of go over a few introductions. Um, Catherine, you can see my screen, correct? I can. OK, perfect. Thank you. I am going to copy the link to the slide deck and put it in the chat for you. Um, one thing before we talk about um, just some housekeeping type things, if you are not able to access the chat because we have discovered with Teams webinar um, that some PSUs have security settings in place that will block the chat, um, you won't be able to view it or um, chat using it. Um, however, you can use the Q&A feature. So it's at the top of your screen. Um, right beside the chat and it says Q&A. So Catherine and I will be monitoring both of those um, throughout the presentation today. But I am going to go ahead and get started just to be courteous um, or just to keep courtesy of your time. So here we go. All right, so first off, my name is Rebecca Stokes. I am the product manager for SchoolNet for NCDPI. My email address is located there on slide two. Um, if you are already in the slide deck or it's on the screen, um, and I just appreciate you so much being here with us today. And we also have Catherine Simone, the wonderful support that we have. Um, Catherine, would you like to say your official title? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Catherine Simone, I am the implementation manager from Pearson for North Carolina. And we just consider her all things SchoolNet, such a great uh, resource that we have here in North Carolina <laughs> to have the partnership with Catherine. All right, so as I go over a few housekeeping things, I am going to cut my camera um, just to um, keep some of the bandwidth of me sharing and speaking and all of those things. Um, but I will be back um, at the end of the session. So let me cut that. There we go. All right, so a few housekeeping items um, specifically with CEUs. So if you are with us today, which it looks like I can see 40 people with us today, um, you do get CEU credit for participating in the live webinar. You'll get 0.1 CEUs. Um, and just keep in mind that you do have to have 10 hours of credit to equal one full CEU. Um, and I will send you a certificate um, based off of the amount of time that you are in the webinar with us. Um, and the type of credit it is will actually be determined by your district. Um, so you will want to follow the uh, procedure that your PSU has in place for um, turning in CEUs, but you will get a copy of the slide deck if you need to present that to your district, as well as your CEU certificate that will include the title of today's session, as well as the date. Um, for you to be able to uh, turn in, okay? Um, and if you happen to share this with any of your coworkers that couldn't make it or anything, um, we cannot give credit for watching um, the recorded webinar, only if you are live with us, okay? All right. Um, so with Teams webinar, it will not allow you to unmute. Um, so we do encourage you to use the chat or the Q&A feature. Um, and if for some reason, um, neither of those are working to, um, because of your district security settings they have in place, we do have our email addresses on slide two. Um, please feel free to send any questions to us um, there, but just know we won't be able to check our email during the session, but we will get back with you after the session is over. All right, so again, thank you so much for being here with us today, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so our agenda um, has several things on it today, all concerning um, using SchoolNet in the math classroom. So we're going to explore some filter options specific to math, uh, talk about adding items to a test, duplicating test items and editing them to um, meet your specific math needs. We'll talk about some test settings to keep in mind, uh, special features just for math, 
um, we're going to talk about embedding a Desmos calculator, and we'll also talk about some K2 features. So if we have any K2 teachers on the call today, uh, we are going to be talking about some special features that you have um, just for you. And then, of course, we always put Q&A at the end, but please feel free to um, ask any questions that you have throughout the session. All right, so um, first off, just in case you are brand new to the platform, uh, we always like to go over how you actually access SchoolNet, um, and that is through your NC Ed Cloud. Um, so the same place that you would go for your um, sys icons, SchoolNet will be there as well. Um, you want to make sure that you are viewing all your applications in NCA Cloud and not just the ones that you have as favorites. Um, and it's usually at the bottom just because they are in alphabetical order, but you're looking for a red circle with a white house, and that is going to be your SchoolNet platform. Um, if for some reason you do not have SchoolNet access, we do have a training site for you. It is located on slide eight, um, so you can click on this link here and we have a username and a password for you um, to be able to access the training site. But we do encourage you to be in the live site um, if you are going to be following along. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine, who is going to talk about exploring filter options. Okay, everyone, uh, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I have a pre-made test that I started in the training site um, that I will be using to demonstrate um, all the features that you're seeing in the uh, slide deck. So just, uh, I want you to note, I made this test. Um, it's called Math Copy Items, just so I remembered what it was. Uh, but I'm gonna start by searching the item banks using the filters for math items. So on the left-hand side here, I'm going to go to Assessments, Item Banks, <clears throat> I can select a specific item bank or I can, um, I'm sorry, or I can choose all of them. Um, for this, I just want to point out that as teachers, you will have access to the key data systems item bank and the classroom bank. So let me just click on this bank here. Okay, and immediately you see this um, feature in the top left that says filters. I'm going to choose my subject, mathematics. <clears throat> and then I highly recommend you choose a grade level. Um, my test happened to be a third grade math test. I can select by standards. So here um, I would have, whoops, sorry, clicked on the wrong one. Mathematics, third grade. Um, I'm not going to use the extend, I'm going to use the regular mathematics. Then I can pick a uh, domain. Uh, let's just say I wanted to do operations and algebraic thinking. I could click the arrow here and open up so I can see all the standards. <clears throat> Maybe I want to do this multiply and divide within 100. If I want to include all the substandards, I should click the plus sign. If I only want to include one standard, I can just individually click on the standard and it's going to move over here to the right. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to click the plus sign that puts them all the substandards in. Okay, click that. Now you can see them populate, save and close. Okay, um, I'm just going to pick first couple of items here. And then I'm going to say item actions. Uh, whoops, I forgot I had a few more filters to show you. Sorry about that. So I can click those items or I can scroll down to the bottom and click all filters. Now, this opens up every possible filter within um, the system. 
I can choose item types. I can filter by item types if I want. I can filter by date, and we're going to show you in a, in a bit um, a Google Sheet where we tell you when we add new items. So you could put the date in here for the newest items if you like. I could search by uh, DOK, um, Bloom's Cognitive, or la the language that the question's in, English or Spanish. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I would just apply my filters. So I applied just two to demonstrate here. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to go back. I'm still going to pick two items here. And I'm going to say item actions I want to add to a test. Now, remember, I already had a test created. I could start a new test by clicking here and saying create new test with these items, or I'm going to put in my math copy and hope it comes up. Oh, I should have saved the number, sorry. Well, I'll find it. It was a good demonstration. It's grade three, use my filters. I can do advanced, my last name. And there's my test. So filters are your friend. Um, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to select this test. It says I'm adding two items. I'm going to click OK. I already had three items in this test. Now you can see I have five. OK, so that would be a way to filter the items. Um, to see, um, select the ones that best meet your needs um, within the system. And again, you can do that with any bank. Um, you can choose certain item types, um, et cetera, and then add them to an existing uh, test. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you with these items there's um, a feature within the system. If I change from the item summary to item details, I get the option to copy the items and make a duplicate of them. So why is this important for math? Well, it's not, it doesn't work so great for ELA science or social studies, but in math, if I look at this question, Question is, which equation has the same unknown value? 15 divided by blank equals three. Well, any of these questions that I selected, greater than or less than, um, which one's the greatest in fractions, for math, I can easily copy these over and make a duplicate with new numbers. So if I want to do that, I'm going to hit copy multiple items, and I'm going to pick a couple so that I can demonstrate this. Pick two. Copy selected items. Are you sure you want to copy the selected items? Yes, copy. Okay, it's going to ask me to put it. I don't know why it wants me to put them back in that test, but I mean, I do know why, but it's going to make me put them back in the test. Uh, put my name there. I could copy them to a new test if I want, or I can put them back in this test. For this demonstration, I'm going to put them back in this test. <clears throat> and what you're gonna see now, I have seven items. So when I go to the item details, I won't touch the first one. I'm gonna go down to where I see the first duplicate, which is right here. And I'm going to edit, click the three lines, to the right, and I'm going to edit this item. So for this part of the demonstration, not only do I wanna show you how to copy the item and create a new item out of it, but I also wanna just demonstrate the equation editor, which is strictly a math feature within the system, okay? So 
if I just want to change 15 divided by blank equals three, I'm going to, I'll leave that there for a minute, but I'm going to click outside here. Down here in the content editor, you see this symbol. <clears throat> and if I click on it, it will open the equation editor for me. Okay. So I'll move this over here. And just for simplicity, I am going to change this problem to, hang on a second. So you can see the whole thing, 18 divided by blank equals three. I'm going to pretty much keep it the same because I want to demonstrate how I can change this. OK, then you're going to hit save. And there's my oh, I should have put a box in there. I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Just and then I'm going to delete this. OK. Um, and I'm going to go down here and I can do the same process with the answer choices. So this would be three times um, equals, and it's, it's pretty manual, equals 18. And I'm going to hit save. Okay. And I'm going to take out the previous answer. OK, so I can go through and change all of these very easily. Um, and I will have a new problem. But it mimics the first problem in the sheet or uh, in the test. The next thing <clears throat> I want to scroll down on this problem and I want to show you that I can go here and if I choose to, I can add rulers. Texas Instruments calculator. I don't think you need that one. This would be a third grade test. I'll probably use a fourth grade um, basic four function calculator. Okay, so I added those tools to this particular item. Now, what I want to show you is you see here there's a reference sheet. Before the training, I had added a reference sheet to the first question. When I copied it, it retained the reference sheet in the copied item. OK, so let me click on number two, which I did not add um, a reference sheet to. I'm going to scroll down here again. You I can pick a ruler, centimeter, uh, calculator, and I can upload a reference sheet. So I pre-saved one to my computer. I'm going to click upload my math reference sheet, click open, and I'm going to save that item. OK, um, here again, I could click in here. I can click this um, symbol and I could edit this particular uh, answer choice. For fractions, it's a little bit different. You have to, I just want to demonstrate this. You have to type in the bottom and the top, um, but it is hey, there for you to hey, use. Hey, Catherine. Did I miss something? No, we just had a question. Um, oh, sorry. You ahead. were on the screen that would go with this question. Um, oh, perfect. They are wondering if there is a button that allows you to enter a new empty box. Uh, so like no. in that first question, it was like five times and it had a box. Yeah, I shouldn't have used that question because that was an image. It wasn't created with the equation editor. So someone made that, we'll say in Word, and then copied and pasted, not copied and pasted it, uploaded it as an image. And I apologize, That's a, that was a misrepresentation of that particular problem. Thank you. That answers that question. OK, um, so what I just want to show you real quick is what that reference sheet looks like. Did my test nav open up? Um, it is loading. OK, yet. OK, just want to make sure that it didn't. I don't need to reshare. OK, so for this first problem over here, this is the student view. Over here to the right, you see exhibits. 
This is actually the reference sheet I uploaded. So I know it doesn't really go with the question, but I just needed a quick reference sheet. But this, you can put multiple reference sheets here, but this is attached to the question and it's available for the students to use. Let me get to the question. Okay, for this question, I just, oh, and I added a fraction in there when I did it. Sorry, I saved it that way. Um, <clears throat> this question, I wanted to demonstrate how I put the tools in here. Put all these, show you what they look like, my calculator. So these were the tools that I added for this particular question. Okay. All right. Um, let me think for a minute on that one. Okay. Um, so two things, or three things actually, filtering the items that you bring in. Okay. The equation editor. All right. Uh, if you are not three to five, it defaults to the level of the test that you created. And if this were a six to eight test, you would see the six to eight editor. Um, the text and math editor. Can I can I re re uh redo my question my answer to that previous question. I just want to type this in here and show you because if you choose the text plus math editor, if I had 15 divided by um whoops oops 15 I'll say times here because it's easier for me. And then I could say I could put in a um variable as the placeholder and then type and answer. This was supposed to be divide. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind with the math today. My apologies. Um, and this would have been three. So while it wouldn't put a box, I could put an X or, a sp um, <clears throat> or another symbol there to represent it. Okay, back to that previous. Um, uh, question in the chat, will you receive a recording of this, Rebecca? Yes, I was just um, typing okay. that. So Sorry everyone about that. that is, you're good. Everyone that is in this session, you will get an email um, from me um, that will have the slide deck, the recording of the session, and your CEU certificate. But if for some reason you miss that email, the recordings are always posted on your splash page, which is on the home screen of your SchoolNet um, platform. Yeah, of course. Okay, and I'm really gonna mess up my third grade tests now because I wanna show you the subscripts and the superscripts. So um, third grade math does not have exponents, but we know that once we get into the middle school, we need to put <clears throat> exponents for numbers. So it could be a variable, two, and this would be the superscript to put exponents in. I could do the same thing with a number if I chose to. So let's put 15 and then to the third, okay? If I know this is math folks, but in science, sometimes uh, we may need the subscript. So if I am doing two, and this and maybe I put a little X in there. OK, um, while it's not third grade math, just want to make sure that we are demonstrating all of these features here. So <clears throat> one thing I want to make sure you see. Is. When I do not have my cursor in the content box. I don't see the editing materials. So if you go to a question and you don't see the equation editor symbol or the superscript or the subscript, just remember you need to click in the content box and then all the, tool, the editing tools will appear for you there, okay? Just one other side note, um, I wanna mention this. If you are creating something, an image, um, 
you may be putting a graph in here or something else. Um, <clears throat> you cannot just copy it and paste it into this content box. You need to upload it using the adding images uh, icon here. Okay, so uh, let me see. If I can just get a quick graph for you here, image. So if I just wanted a quick piece of graph paper, I use a Mac, so I do Control Shift 4. If you're on a PC, you can use a snipping tool. I'm just going to save that. <clears throat> I'm going to click this Add Image. And then the first image there should be my graph paper. OK, don't copy and paste. It's going to produce an error for this particular question. OK, all right. Let me just take a quick second here. Um, excuse me. Make sure. I didn't miss. I think the only thing, because I was kind of following along, was um, if you can just show how to add the formula reference sheet or the manipulatives to the entire test instead oh, of yes per question. Totally can do that. So you have to return to test details. I'm going to save my crazy changes in this test. And I'm going to go to test settings. Remember before to duplicate, I went to item details. Now I'm going to go to test settings. And here on the right, test item defaults, edit. Um, use item settings, or I'm going to enable them for the entire test. If I enable them for the entire test, you can click them here. I'm just adding everything <clears throat> for my reference sheet. At upload to all items. I'm going to go back, choose my file again, and I'm going to save. And now, when I go back to my, well, let's just let's just preview this one. <clears throat> now every item should have the formula reference sheet and also the tools. So, oops, uh oh, well, there's my exhibit. Let me see. Might not have done it because I didn't set it in the beginning. I think I needed to, I think I made a mistake. I'm so sorry, folks. I, I do think there was a checkbox that said apply this to. There probably was. <laughs> items, and I didn't so really I... notice it until you clicked save, and I was like, oh, maybe we didn't need that. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, we needed that one. Okay, so this is, you know, we're really informal here, so just sharing. I think I got them all that time. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Catherine and I live in real life and we understand <laughs> that these things happen. <laughs> well, this would happen to me if I was making this test for real. <laughs> so. Oh, sorry, I just have to laugh at, laugh at myself. Did we answer that Q&A? I see a dot there. Sorry, while well, this is loading. Um, yes, I answered both of those. OK, sweet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Probably going to take more longer than the last time to apply all those settings. So in the meantime, was there anything else I missed on those features? Because if not. Um, no, the only thing might might be just showing the item counts that we have, but um, I can do that before I talk about Desmos. OK, I'm going to lower this because I do want to show one item. That I did not show and I see it in the PowerPoint. So one item type that is specific to numbers is a gridded item. And this item, if when you create um, the uh, item, I could just say something as simple as I can use my equation editor and I'm going to say 10 times Two. I'm just going to save it. 
And here, I would just answer, enter the correct response as 20, okay? Um, when you have, I didn't put a standard in or anything, I know it's gonna kick back an error, but when you have this type of item, <clears throat> it eliminates the choice factor of a multiple choice and actually requires the student to do the calculation. So consider searching for gridded items or changing out a multiple choice item um, if it's a single answer to a gridded, okay? And let me see if my test map opened yet. Ugh, I made a mistake because I had an error in the test. That's why it's not gonna preview. Sorry about that, guys. Um, would have to fix wherever I made my error um, to do that. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I showed you the gridded items um, because that is important for um, some of the math items. And then I think we may have gotten them all. All right, well then I will go ahead and start with adding Desmos. So I'm going to take back this share, and there is a q and A I just saw pop up. I haven't answered okay. that yet. I'll grab it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So before we hop into um, adding Desmos, um, I did want to point out slide 19, um, and that goes over um, how many math items we have in the classroom bank and the KDS bank. Um, and I wanted to show you how you can actually access this so you don't have to worry about um, always returning back to the slide deck, um, but you will see a link at the very bottom that says item bank counts. But also, if we go to the live site, and I'm going to go like I'm a teacher. Okay, so as a teacher, and let me make sure that I am in here. I am. Okay. Um, so right here where it says Schoolnet Splash, okay, um, you're going to see the copyright information, but if you scroll in the box, not on the page itself, but just in the box, then you're going to get past the um, copyright information. You're going to see the recordings. So earlier when um, a user had asked if we were going to have access to the recording. So not only will I email it to you, it will also be on our YouTube channel and we also post it here. So you can see the recordings that we have um, for September. I'm just now realizing that I haven't put the recording for last Monday's, um, so I need to do that. Um, but I will post the recordings right here beside the webinars as well. But if I keep scrolling past the webinars, you're going to see a document in blue that says NC Item Bank Counts in SchoolNet. So I'm going to click there. And within this document, there are several tabs, um, but there's only a few that you really need to pay attention to. Um, so earlier when Catherine was going over the filters, uh, she said that there is a place to put the dates. So if you see the NCDPI content updates tab, we always put the dates that we uh, receive the questions so that you can search by the newest questions if you prefer. Um, but we will always post how many items we received per subject and grade level. Um, and with the DPI questions, we receive them twice a year, once at the beginning of the school year, usually in the summer, and then the second upload we get in January usually. Um, so just depending on when we are sent those items. But if we click on the tab, it's the third tab that says NCDPI Classroom, that's where you can see how many items you have that are from NCDPI. Um, so you can see that they are all multiple choice and starting at grade three. So you can see the total numbers that you have access to depending on your grade level. And then we also have the KDS item bank, which is a bank we purchase from Renaissance. So if I click on the fourth tab, that will show me how many items I have for math starting in kindergarten. Um, and they have more than multiple choice. So if you are specifically interested in technology enhanced items, then KDS is gonna be where those items are located. So you can see we have multiple choice, gridded, open response, inline, checklist, hotspot, and gap match. 
and you can see depending on the grade level um, or the course how many items we have for that grade level and subject area okay so wanted to go over that and how you can actually see how many items you have but I'm going to hop back to the slide deck and show you how you can embed a Desmos calculator. Um, now, I know often teachers will have students just open a um, additional window uh, for a Desmos calculator. But if you did not want students to access anything outside of the test, or if you're using a secure browser, then students aren't able to open an additional tab. Um, so you would want the calculator embedded into the question. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in the training site. So let me hop here, that's the live site. Let me hop here, there we go. Um, so I already have a math assessment um, created where I've already chosen some items. So I'm gonna go through and click edit items. And it's going to pull up this screen. Now, I am very aware that more than likely all of the questions I chose since they were fifth grade would not require a Desmos calculator. So just use your imagination that these questions would actually need a Desmos. Um, and if I, as the teacher, am going to take the time to embed a Desmos calculator, I'm going to want to save these questions in order to use them in the future. So the first thing that you're going to want to do on any of the questions that you pull from an item bank, now you won't have to do this if you create the item yourself, but if you pull them from an item bank, you are going to need, um, and all of this is in the slide deck, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is right underneath where it says multiple choice or gridded, whatever the item type is, it's gonna have a sentence that tells you that the item is from the item bank. And at the very end, you're gonna see a blue unlink, okay? So I'm gonna click unlink. And what this is doing is this is making this question editable and it is now becoming like my copy. Um, you will have to save it and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But once I unlink it, I now have the ability to make edits and save it. Okay, so um, before when Catherine was showing how you can make edits to the question without unlinking, you can do that and you would be able to um, deliver it to the students, but you wouldn't be able to save it without unlinking it. Okay. So in my question content, if I wanted my calculator to be right below this question, I'm going to click inside the box to have my rich content editor appear. And you're going to see in the rich content editor, right beside the spell check, you're going to see this source code icon right here. So when I click this, it's going to show me the source code. Okay. Now, if I go to the slide deck on slide 37, we have a document that says QRD for embedding Desmos. Okay. So I keep this starred in my um, bookmarks, but if I open this up, it gives me the source code for the three types of Desmos that we have. We have four function, scientific, and graphing. So if I needed a scientific Desmos calculator, I'm not gonna copy the red text. That's why we have it red so that you know not to access that. But I'm gonna copy the entire source code right behind the colon. And I'm gonna just hit copy. I'm gonna go back to my window where I was editing here. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna paste and save. And now I have a Desmos calculator embedded into my question. So I can do this with however many items I want. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna click on the second question. I'm gonna do it one more time. And again, you will have this recording, um, but the first step is I'm going to unlink. I'm gonna to come to my question and go to the rich content editor where I have my source code right beside my spell check. I'm going to hit enter and I already have it um, copied. So I'm just going to hit paste again. And click save and I have my Desmos calculator. OK, so I'm only going to do it on these two items. So what I'm going to do is I am going to return to my test details. 
I'm going to save my changes. So I had two questions that I unlinked. Okay. So if I scroll down to my items, notice at the very bottom, okay, there is blank space right here. Okay. But as soon as I click finalize test, I'm going to say, are you sure? Yes. Now I have an option that says add all items to item bank. So this is only going to add the items that I unlinked. Okay, so notice it says it will not update items that are currently in an item bank. So it will not make changes to the ones that you um, don't unlink. But those first two that I added Desmos, I can click add all items to item bank. And I can either use a bank that I already have Notice that I've done this demonstration a few times in here, or I can create a new one. So I think this test was fifth grade, so I might say fifth grade Desmos. I'm just going to put a description of questions with Desmos added. I can add other people to this bank. So if my grade level, um, if we were all self-contained and we all taught math, um, or if I have a coworker that also teaches math one at my school, we could share a bank. And as we add Desmos uh, calculators to items, we can save them here in this bank that we share. Um, so I am going to click create bank and save selection. So now when I go to my item banks, I should now see a fifth grade Desmos. There we go. And it has two items in it. And it's those two questions that I unlinked and added the Desmos calculator to. Okay. So again, I recommend if you are going to want to embed a Desmos calculator, I recommend clicking on this document that is on slide 37 um, and just saving that in your bookmarks bar um, just so you have it frequently at your fingertips. Um, and while it only takes a few seconds to actually embed the Desmos calculator, if you were doing that for your questions throughout the year, that um, would take some time for you to actually add them to each individual question. But then next year when you are um, creating assessments, you would be able to pull from that bank and they're already embedded there for you. Rebecca, um, I'm gonna stop yes. you there. We had a Q&A. Um, question, uh, mm -hmm. is it only Desmos that can be embedded? What if you had another embed code, like a video? Yes, that does work. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, this is just how to embed a Desmos, but yes, you can embed, I uh, would think, any links that yes, you have. Yes, you can embed um, video. <laughs> However, I just caution you that if I know you can go get a YouTube video that has an embed code, but you have to make sure that your uh, school servers do not have a block on those links. OK, um, but yes, videos will work. Um, so that was that question. And then we have another one. Oh, just a comment. All right, go ahead. We're good. Okay. Sorry about that, Rebecca. Right. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. All right, so let's see. I believe that I covered all of the parts of that. Um, the biggest thing is going to be making sure you save them. You don't want to have to do that work again. All right, so now I'm going to move on to our K2 friends. Um, let me go to the live site for this. So if you are K2 or you have um, coworkers that are K2 and would be interested in this, um, let me show you. Let me get out of this district. Let me go back to mine. There we go. OK, um, so these questions are only in the KDS bank. OK, so I'm going to come over to the left hand side and I'm going to go to the assessments tab and I'm going to just go to find items. Um, if you built the test first, of course, then this is the same box that would pop up if you were um, adding questions to your test. But I am going to select the key data systems bank. And then I'm going to select math. And the specific examples I'm going to show are in kindergarten, but um, these are available in K first and second. If I go to kindergarten. 
All right, so automatically you're going to see just on this very first question, um, there are built in read alouds. This does not require the students to have a read aloud accommodation. Um, this does not require you turning on read aloud for the test itself. These are built in from KDS uh, for specific questions. Um, so this would prompt students to listen and it will read the uh, question and answer choices to the student. Um, and that's automatic. And then another feature, and I would click on it, but with my um, headphones in, you would not be able to hear it. So you would just be listening to silence. So that's why I'm not going to um, click on it. Um, but you um, please feel free to explore this within your live site as well. Um, but another feature, if I scroll down, is right here. OK. So this question looks a little odd because there is no question. It is just images that say, you know, a juice box, a box of cereal, et cetera. So that is on purpose. It is not because they forgot to put in a question. So if I actually go to view the item details, this question, if you scroll to the bottom, includes teacher instructions. So these questions are meant for the teacher to either do whole group or if they're working with just a, a small group of students or just one student individually. Um, these questions are meant to only show students the images and then the teacher actually reads um, the question and the answer choice to the students. Um, so they do have some of those built in as well. So if you ever um, come across one in K2 for KDS that does not have a question, it is because it has teacher led instructions. Okay. All right. Any questions on the KDS? I think that was the only two features I had there. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. The last thing that we were going to talk about, and that will leave us um, just a few minutes for questions, which is perfect, are some test settings to consider when you are um, building your math assessment. Of course, keeping in mind all of the filter options that Catherine showed at the beginning with and the um, equation editor, um, the specific manipulatives, so all of those things. Um, but one additional thing to consider is for your students that have read aloud. Um, so there's two things that we always want you to keep in mind. So let me go to the, I'm in the training site. So when you are building an assessment, one thing to keep in mind in the test settings is that you will have to turn on accommodations here. So if you have any student in your class that would need line reader, magnifier, or read aloud, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have them turned on for the test. Um, the text to speech, you do have the option of English and Spanish, um, but just keep in mind, it does not vary. Like that is for the entire test. So if you have one student that would need read aloud in Spanish, you would want to make a copy of the assessment, do the text to speech and choose Spanish for that student because it's one language for the entire test. OK, um, but just because you turn it on here does not mean that the students are automatically going to receive that accommodation. You have to make sure that it is turned on in their profiles as well. So I'm going to go home. And um, I am in a teacher account. So if I have a student who was in this section, so I'm looking at my choose a section widget here on the home page, um, and all of your sections come over from the SIS. So depending on which course the student was in, we'll pretend that they were in this reading section here. When I scroll down to the bottom, I'll see my classroom profile. It's gonna list all of my students. So let's say this student right here has an IEP with accommodations that require read aloud. If I click on the student, you are going to be taken to their profile. So all of these tabs are going to sync from the SIS until we get to the assessments. Those are actually pulling from SchoolNet itself. But the very last tab, this test now PNP, this is where you would enter accommodations for the student. These do not sync from 
the SIS because accommodations are through ECATS um, and SchoolNet does not have access to pool from ECATS. So um, even though it might be marked that they have an IEP in the SIS, the accommodations will not come over. Um, they are attached to the student, so it's not saying that every teacher has to enter accommodations for this student. It only has to be completed once, um, but they do have to be entered for the student. So depending on whether they need color contrast, answer masking, line reader, mask, magnifier, or text-to-speech, we also have extra testing time and um, calculators. If their IEP specifies that they need to receive a calculator for every question on every assessment, um, you have that option as well. Um, so specifically for read aloud, you would wanna make sure to click text to speech. You can choose the default voice and speed. Um, and then once you have this turned on, you can click save and the student would then receive the accommodation if it's turned on in their profile and it's turned on for the assessment. It has to be in both of those places. Okay. All right. So, Catherine, any questions that came up while I was talking about those things? Nope. I answered uh, one question was, can you add a protractor? And yes, that was in the settings, um, but I don't see any other ones. <clears throat> okay. All right, so that leaves us with just a few minutes um, to cover any questions that you have. Um, but really quick before I um, pause and answer um, any questions that you have, do you want to let you know if I go home? Um, let me go to teacher. There we go, um, about our upcoming webinars. So um, we do not have any in November um, because we did have the two in September and two in October, but we are going to be talking in December about specifically data reports. Um, January, we'll talk about technology enhanced items. We'll talk about science um, with SchoolNet specifically in February. We'll talk about performance-based assessments in March and then a formative assessments and station rotation in April. So we hope to see you at future webinars. Um, you can register for them here or however you registered for um, uh, this session here. Um, but that is all that we have today. Um, we so do we, have a question. Um, is okay. there a way to allow everyone to have text to speech without adjusting each student's profile? No. Yeah, no, you would have to go in to each student. So we've had a few um, PSUs that have asked about this. And what we recommend is just that the home, every homeroom teacher does the, the read aloud for their students. So it's not falling necessarily on one person to do all four of their sections. Um, if the homeroom teacher just goes in and does their homeroom for read aloud, um, then that would kind of cut back on some of that time. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing, um, but now is the time for any questions that you might have for Catherine and I, um, whether it was something we covered or just a question you have in general um, about something that has come up with you with SchoolNet. <laughs> but if you do not have any questions, then we thank you so much for your time today. Um, and we mm. hope you have a great rest of your week and we're going to hang back um, for the next few minutes for anybody that does have any additional questions. All right, so it is not going to allow you to unmute. I do see that you have a hand up. Um, so if possible, if you could put it in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and oh, I do see some questions in here. Um, where in are you seeing questions? Oh, I thought um, in I, the Q&A. Did I miss some? Um, I'm not sure. I'm looking. So I don't see comments for some of them. So you just let me know. Oh, I, I think we answered them out loud. OK, we answered the text to speech, the recording one. Multiple qu Desmos, we had that question more than once. OK. Um, how do you add? Yeah, to the whole test. A lot of people want to do it to the whole test. That came up gotcha. several times. Gotcha, mm. gotcha. Oh, um, middle school, math, grade six, North Carolina. How do I get grades? Oh, you did answer that one to go to mm -hmm. power school. Okay. Yep. 
I did. Um, okay. And we just had another question come in. Can we see recordings? Yes, of course. So I will show you where you can access the recordings. So um, when you log into your SchoolNet, um, you're going to see a box that says SchoolNet splash page. Um, and you'll see first off the copyright information, but in this box, if you scroll, then you will see the webinars. And this is where you can either register for them or I will post the recordings. Um, so I just change where it says recording to, um, or where it says register to recording. But we also have on DPI's YouTube um, channel, we do have a specific playlist for SchoolNet. Um, and I post all of the webinar recordings there as well. Oh, new questions. Sometimes okay. I see questions in Spanish. How can I see them only in English? Use okay. the filter for the question language and set it to English. And there's one other thing you can do too while I'm already in here. On go the left-hand side, um, if you go to the assessments tab, if you go to your item banks, there is a key data system Spanish bank. Um, if you underneath that bank, if you uncheck this box right here, then none of the Spanish items from that bank will show. So, um, the only other Spanish questions you would see is if it was built into one of the other banks. Um, but more than likely, the ones you're seeing are coming from this Spanish item bank. So just uncheck that box. Yeah, of course. Okay, so any other questions? Catherine and I are here for you. Um, but if you don't have any, then um, we thank you for joining us and I hope you have a great day and um, a great rest of your week.